Hey Apaches, my name's Steven Zarita. Happy career day. A little bit about me, I graduated in 2008 from Antonian College Preparatory High School and I'm currently living and working as an animator out in Hollywood on the popular YouTube cartoon known as The Annoying Orange. I'd always liked making movies, but I figured out while I was at Antonian that I wanted to make movies and videos a career after watching Star Wars. So actually all throughout my time at Antonian, I made a lot of short little videos and brought the film club back and, and a lot of those videos had to do with lightsabers because again I love Star Wars and when I was working on lightsabers that paved the way for me to try more ambitious effects. One of the favorite movies I made at Antonian was Oedipus Rex 2025 which originally started off as an English project but then that five minute video turned into a 30 minute mini movie I made the year after and that was basically just a lot of Star Wars references because Revenge of the Sith had just come out. I took a lot of creative liberties and uh, used a lot of areas around the school. Some of them are different now, like the cafeteria since the last time I've been there, but uh, it was a lot of fun and I got a really good reaction from a bunch of students who just wanted to see this cool special effects movie that I made. And that's when I realized I kind of really like getting a reaction out of people with the videos I make, which again led me into this career. If you want to get into animation, uh, one of the best places you can go is Nomon School of Visual Effects. That's for if you want to work on like the big stuff like Star Trek and the Marvel movies. Uh, those guys spit out extremely dedicated animators. Who, that's all they do is they focus on animation. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can go in the animation world. Nomon tends to spit out people who specialize. You know, they have hundreds and hundreds of people working on just one shot of the Enterprise. They have one guy whose entire job is to make sure there are the right amount of scratches on the hull, and there's another guy who makes sure the lens flares look right, and there's another guy who makes sure the lens flares look spotty. Me, I'm a little bit more well-rounded. Uh, when I say that, I mean not only do I do animation, but I do directing and writing and cinematography. Uh, and that I learned at the film school I went to at the University of Texas at Austin, where I graduated in 2012 with a degree in RTF, Bachelor of Sciences. I guess I should do that actually. You don't just have to go to UT. USC is widely considered to be the best in the nation. I went there in 2007 to take a summer seminar and wow, they have an amazing film school and, and a lot of campus resources. Uh, I, I still prefer UT, but uh, I mean, just in terms of sheer objects, USC is the place to go. You also have UCLA, NYU, Emerson, the list is endless. The, the New York Film Academy, which has campuses all over the world, is another option. If you're looking to get started in filmmaking, TV stuff, video content, YouTube videos, just anything having to do with the entertainment industry, I highly recommend taking the TSTV Kids Camp and uh, I'm actually going to talk about TSTV later on in my video. But TSTV has a camp for high schoolers and you're going to go there, learn how to work with professional equipment, and you're going to create your own 30 minute broadcast that's actually going to air on TV in Austin by the end of the week long camp. A uh, little bit of a plug, but I used to be a counselor there and I used to work there and uh, I know you'd get a lot out of it if this is something that you want to do. Ironically, I never took a class in college on animation. I, I'm entirely self-taught. Uh, which is becoming more and more common these days. Uh, it's something I like to brag about, but what that means for you more importantly is you have no excuse to not get started if this is something you want to do. If you want to get in animation, start making some cool effects in the program called After Effects, which is an Adobe program, check out the website videocopilot.net. If you have a copy of After Effects, uh, you should do what I do and occasionally just open it up mess around with stuff and see what happens because I've discovered a lot of very cool effects and techniques that way that I use in my job. So I'm talking a lot about animation, maybe that's not your thing, maybe you want to go into writing, directing, anything behind the scenes uh, in the entertainment industry, or well, if that's something you want to do, behind the scenes work and any part of it, do this. Go take the best quality movies uh, you can watch, you know, uh, find the DVD because this stuff's not on Netflix. Uh, find the DVD, listen to the commentary, watch the bonus features, look at the making of documentary. You can learn, I mean they basically tell you how they made the movie and you learn the process from them. They'll talk about writing the script, they'll talk about the camera work, they'll talk about the special effects, they'll talk about building the sets. Um, if this is something you want to do you can learn so much from that and that's a great way to get started and understand how the whole film process works. And then if you're going to a film school, which I highly recommend, although it's very competitive. Uh, knowing all these things from commentaries and bonus features is going to give you a good leg up. 
If you really want a solid leg up though, you have to start making stuff now. I was making stuff in high school with a cheap little camera I got at Best Buy and some cheap software. Uh, that stuff is even cheaper now. Odds are the phone you have right now is better than the camera I had. The camera I had filmed at a resolution of 720 by 480 and your phones probably film in 1920 by 1080. So resolution wise, you already have a huge leg up, leg up on what I was able to do. So start filming stuff. Software is very cheap. Every computer has iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or something you can get. There's cheap versions of Adobe Premiere that you can get. You can try Adobe Premiere Elements. Uh, you might be able to get a student edition of some more professional software. Uh, get some software, get your camera, get some friends together, start making stuff because experience, I mean you can watch documentaries and listen to people uh, all you want, but experience is where you're going to learn the most the quickest. Every time you make a mistake, don't get discouraged, that's just something you've learned for next time. And odds are you're not going to make that mistake a second time because you've done it and you're going to learn from it. Film school is extremely competitive, even though you're applying to learn about how to make a movie, you have to show them that you kind of already know how to make a movie, which is a little counterintuitive, but if you're making stuff now, you're going to have a lot of stuff you can put on your resume. If you make something that's good enough now, maybe you can put it in a film festival and win an award. Oh my gosh, imagine if you have an award on your resume when you apply for college. That's going to look very good. So bottom line, start working on stuff now. Doesn't matter if it looks choppy at first, you're going to get better as you go along. Believe me. One question I hear a lot is, do you have to be in Los Angeles or New York to make it in this industry? Um, complicated answer, but no, you don't. I went to school in Austin. A lot of my friends stayed in Austin and they're still working in the industry. A lot of them actually ended up working at Rooster Teeth, which makes tons and tons of video content. And they're even working on a feature film now. Others are working on other independent productions. Austin itself is kind of becoming the third city to go to, so there's a there's a blossoming film industry just right up 35. I know people who live in Portland, who live in Colorado, uh, who live in Seattle, uh, some people up in North Texas. Video content, there's a demand for it everywhere. And thanks to the internet, you don't have to be in any singular place. Uh, some people are very popular YouTubers and they make it in the suburbs of Dallas and they have over a million subscribers on YouTube. Other people like the guy I mentioned in Portland writes for The Annoying Orange and he lives in Portland. Uh, if you want to have a job in writing, you can. it's easier for you to live in more remote places, wherever is most comfortable for you. So yes, you could live other places. That being said, uh, I chose to move to Los Angeles because that's where all the infrastructure is. Uh, that's where all the offices are. That's where all the big wigs, you know, all of the studio executives are. This is where the studios themselves are. I live actually really close to Warner Brothers. Um, Warner Brothers isn't in Austin or the middle of North Texas or Portland. It's in Los Angeles, same with Universal, Disney, all that. So if you're gonna make big studio funded features, you come here. You, you can do indie stuff anywhere, but you know, all the studio support is here. Everybody who makes the decisions are here. So yes, you can live other places, but you have to really kind of work harder to compensate. Odds are you're going to have to travel to LA or New York anyways just to meet with those big wigs. You're going to have to work harder to network. One of the advantages to living in LA is that you can go to a party and just about anybody there is somebody important and is working on a project. You start talking with those people, you build a professional relationship, and now you have someone you can count on for work, for a project, who can refer you, uh, if you play your cards right. So you gotta up your networking game if you're not here in LA. You gotta, you know, book those, book those travel dates. You gotta go to conferences and conventions and go to where the important people are for enough time for them to recognize you. That goes a long way. Not only is film school extremely hard to get into, the entertainment industry itself is hard to get into because everybody wants to be in here. Everybody wants to be famous. So again, you gotta get a leg up on people. If you've made it, into film school, you can't just do your coursework and say, all right, I'm good to go. You need to do a lot of extra work. You need to be making stuff as much as you can. Uh, just your short films for class aren't gonna cut it. Me personally, I worked at Texas Student TV at UT Austin. Remember when I talked about Kids Camp, this is what I was talking about. Texas Student TV was the nation's only FCC licensed student run TV station, which meant we would make shows every week and they would actually air on TV all across the city. So while I was there, I produced an hour-long video game show. I produced news updates twice a week. I worked on a bunch of different shows. I programmed when the shows aired in the schedule. And by the end of it all, I actually even created a sitcom and then ran the entire station as the manager for a year. 
And since I was doing all that stuff, every week I was putting out a new 30 minute episode of something. That was a lot to put on my reel because once you get out here, you have to have an impressive reel, whether you want to get an animation, editing, directing, camera work. If you're working on things in that field every week, like I was, you have a lot of things to choose from because the first, you know, maybe year of stuff isn't going to look too great, but the later things are going to look much better. And since you've done so much of it, you have a varied and impressive reel that you can send to employers. So definitely you got to work hard, whether it be at a student TV station, some sort of film club, or just things that you do on your own time and your own initiative. While I was at TSTV, I actually got my first copy of After Effects, and since I was doing stuff every week, every week I was trying new effects and trying new titles and motion graphics. And if I hadn't had that TV station to push me to make those new things every week, I wouldn't be nearly as good as I am in that program, and I guarantee you I wouldn't have the job I have now. So you gotta do way more than what's expected of you to make it in this industry, because like I said, it's extremely competitive. Everybody wants to be famous. Okay, so a little bit more about me. I said I work at The Annoying Orange, which if you don't know what Annoying Orange is, it's a cartoon that's been on YouTube. It started about a little over five years ago, and it's a talking orange that annoys all the other characters in the kitchen, and every other character is some sort of food or inanimate object. My job as the animator is to take the inanimate object and take a voice actor that we have come in, isolate their mouth, isolate their eyes, composite them onto the inanimate object to make it a, a living thing with a face, then just animate their adventures to really boil it down into a nutshell. Is he always like this? Nope, just warming up. I usually do about one episode of the show a week, so it's a very fast turnaround. Occasionally I get more passion projects that take two or three weeks that look extremely good, but either way, it's very fast for a cartoon's production schedule. Right! It's a really cool job because like I said before, I really like getting a reaction out of an audience and seeing them enjoy my work or laugh at a joke I put in there or something silly or sad or funny or scary. Uh, and I get to do exactly that with a gigantic audience at The Annoying Orange. And since we're a small company, we're very closely knit. It's a very cool, I mean, there's only like a couple people in the office and then others who telecommute in. So we all know each other. It's very casual. We actually play foosball. We play video games at the office. We even got a mini paid vacation last summer so we could go out into the desert and shoot an alien invasion. It was pretty cool. So I, I really lucked out. I landed an awesome job right out of college. Actually, I'm going to show you around the office with a quick little tour right now. All right, welcome to the Annoying Orange offices. First thing you see when you walk in is this big old poster of ours with a bunch of celebrity autographs. On one of these posters, we have Billy D. Williams, who was uh, Lando Calrissian in Star Wars. And then uh, we have Weird Al and a bunch of other people. Here we have our family style uh, awkward family photos. On the staircase, there's me. This is the rest of the staff. And then coming up here, you've got the actual office area. First we've got the game room, living room area. Pretty standard couches. Uh, we do a lot of Let's Play videos, if you guys watch Let's Play videos. And we also just play video games for fun here. So we've got a bunch of video games. All the systems, not really. Wii U. Uh, Xbox One, a couple retro consoles, a bunch of games in the cabinet. Over here we play foosball. We are pretty good. Um, I keep saying we should do some sort of YouTube foosball tournament because I think we would dominate with how much we play. Uh, and then for the big channels on YouTube over here, when you hit a million subscribers, you get a gold play button. And we have two for two of our channels that are over a million. And then one for another channel. The silver one is if you pass 100,000. Another one of our channels is over 100,000. Um, over here, we just kind of have a cartoon wall where we put whatever. And then over here, we have our some of our merch on display in this shelf over here. Then if you walk down over here, we have my office with this hilarious meme of me. That's a lovely face. And I like to nerd out, so I kind of have a nerd corner with Star Wars going on up here, Power Rangers going on down here and posters all over the place. Over here is Sour Rangers, one of my pride and joy projects I got to work on. And then, you know, family photos and stuff. But here's where I actually work. This is my uh, my desk setup. And uh, right now it's loading After Effects, which is the program I animate in every day. Over here is our VO booth and uh, gameplay capture area. Uh, we do a lot of Let's Plays with apps 
so we have an iPad dedicated to, uh, you know, all the games that you can download from mobile devices, and then we'll record that right here. Over here is actually where we do the voiceover. So, um, we have our actors come in and sit down right here. And we have them lit well with these two lights. Lighting is something you got to learn about in film school, but basically, we have these cloth materials draped over it to diffuse the light so it's nice and soft. It's not a super harsh shadow. Uh, you don't want harsh shadows with this animation. Basically, our actors will sit here, uh, we'll put a dot on their nose, which helps us in the animation, and then they'll read the line. All right, so this is the program I've been talking about. This is Adobe After Effects, and this is where I do all of my animations. So for an example to show you, I've got Sour Rangers 2, which we released a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I can show you this. If I showed you something new, I guess I'd be in trouble. Uh, but basically, this is how the program works. This is what your animation ends up looking like in your viewer. Over here you have all of your compositions. Each composition is essentially a shot of your project. And then here's where you have all of the pieces you put together in your asset library. Um, you know, you have tiny bits of bread, you have grungy textures, you have pink f foods that are pumpkins. Basically, you take all these, put them together, uh, and then you get your finished product. Over here, we have the famous morphic sequence parody of Power Rangers. And just to show you, there's a lot of things going on. We have these lens flares that are going on behind. We have this glow that goes on behind. And then we have the actual morpher that you cut out and add stuff to. And you have the character, this red guy, that's me. And then if you go in, some of these layers are actually compositions themselves, so you go in and then there's even more layers. So you have this lightning storm, you have lights to put lens flares blinking over here, and then if you go over here, this is actually me, this layer. If you go over here, you can see that there's certain filters, like the puppet filter, that let you move things around. So that's how we move the joints around if some of these characters have joints. Usually they're just a round fruit. Uh, and then if you go in here you can see what I'm talking about when I say that we isolate the eyes and mouths. So over here is uh, my eyes and over here is my mouth. And over here you have the original character that I put stuff on top of. So that is in a nutshell how Adobe After Effects works. Look it's one of the golden tickets from Willy Wonka. Remember when I was talking about harsh light this is harsh light. Here's a quick little film lesson for you. You have shadow and then direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is some of the, it is the harshest light you can have. Softer light kind of fills in the whole thing and it doesn't give you this contrast between light and dark. There's a little bit of a film lesson. If I go over here to the uh, shadowy side, the light bounces off of this wall, diffuses, and then reaches me and now you can see everything. There, I gave you a free little film lesson right there. Alrighty, that's about it for the tour. I'm going to throw it back to me. I also get to act in our cartoons and live action stuff occasionally. Uh, it's funny, I started this whole thing with lightsabers and VFX, and I still get to do lightsabers nowadays, so it kind of came full circle, especially since everybody accused me of putting lightsabers in every movie in high school. Not only do I get to act in stuff, but I also get to write stuff, which is even more fulfilling for me. Uh, the most recent thing I've written is Sour Rangers 2. I'm a big Power Rangers fan, so uh, I got to make that. And I'm working on a new passion project. Time to sour up! Pink pumpkin! Yellow squash! Green cushion! Red zucchini! Hey, what's going on back there? Ah, my butt! All right, Lord Red, are you ready to fight? It's pretty similar to Sour Rangers, so all you 90s kids are gonna get a big kick out of it. The weird thing is, I don't think there's a lot of 90s kids left in high school anymore. Y'all were born in like the super late 90s, at least. You don't really remember it, but you'll probably still get a kick out of this if you appreciate the classics. I think we're in trouble. I've talked about how you have to be working on way more stuff than expected if you're gonna make it in this industry. So when I'm not doing The Annoying Orange, I am working on my own YouTube channel, Hyperdrive Pictures, where we do comedy skits, vlogs, and a podcast where we review movies. And the podcast is called From Under a Rock. Like, hey, you haven't seen that movie? Are you living under a rock? 
I'm on a little bit of hiatus with Hyperdrive Pictures since I'm recovering from an injury, but we'll be back in the swing of things very soon. All right, that's about it for me. I tried to answer everything I imagine you would ask. If, I, if, I, if you have a question that I didn't get to or touch on, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Steven Zarita. Uh, let's see, you can leave a comment. This is gonna be in a YouTube video, so if you find this YouTube video, leave it in a comment. Or uh, if you can't do that, you can always find me at ZaritaSteven at gmail.com and then just put ACP Career Day question in the subject line so I know that it's you. So do all that stuff and then you can get a hold of me. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Before I go, if I, I showed a lot of clips from my videos in high school. I don't know if any of my fellow students from Antonian are currently talking at Career Day, but if they are and you saw them in a video of mine, quote that video to them and see what their reaction is because high school is starting to be a long time ago for me. So I'll be surprised if they remember it or if they're just confused. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in that. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, thanks Antonian for having me for Career Day. Thank you for watching. On Hyperdrive Pictures, I like to end every video with the term punch it. So. That's it from me. I'll see you guys later. Punch it.